Hello. I'm sorry that I can't be with you today. A uh, huge hug to Tessa Tennant uh, in particular. But thanks for the opportunity to share with you some thoughts. Climate change is not just an environmental challenge. It is a fundamental threat to economic development and the fight against poverty. At the World Bank Group, we are concerned that unless the world takes bold action now, a disastrously warming planet threatens to put prosperity out of the reach of millions. On June 19th, the World Bank Group is going to launch a new report about the impacts of climate change. And here's a sneak preview. Without ambitious climate action, we could experience a two degrees centigrade world in our lifetime. In sub-Saharan Africa, food shortages will become more common. In South Asia, shifting rain patterns will leave some areas underwater and others without enough water for power generation, irrigation or drinking. In Southeast Asia, the loss of reefs would diminish tourism, reduce fish stocks and leave coastal communities and importantly cities more vulnerable to storms. Sea level rise has been occurring more rapidly than previously projected and a rise of as much as 50 centimetres by the 2050s may be unavoidable as a result of past emissions. In Southeast Asia, sea level rise is projected to be 10 to 15 per cent higher than the global average, affecting coastal erosion in the Mekong Delta and exposing cities such as Bangkok and Ho Chi Minh City. But we don't need to look decades ahead. Already today, no country, rich or poor, is immune from the impacts of climate-related disasters. We've seen developed countries struggling to cope with events like Hurricane Sandy, but developing countries have far less resources to respond to these disasters. In Thailand, the 2011 floods resulted in losses of approximately 45 billion US dollars, or about 13% of GDP. Global supply chains were interrupted. So business all over the world is already being affected by climate change. As the world needs to step up to the climate challenge, as it needs to shift growth trajectories towards low carbon growth, there are many, many investment opportunities on that way ahead. And we need the investor community to be very specific about what you need and to factor long-term systemic risk from climate change into your decision matrices. In our dialogues with all countries, it is not so much why a green trajectory is to be pursued, there are strong co-benefits, or what is or what it should contain, low carbon. But increasingly the discussion is simply how to actually do it in a fiscally constrained and risk averse environment. Let's break the opportunities down. Let's take a closer look at infrastructure. Many developing countries, in particular here in Asia, are now building the infrastructure that will underpin their economies for decades or more. Estimates say that a trillion dollars needs to be invested each year above current investments through 2020 to meet the growing global demand for infrastructure services. But this is just to meet basic requirements. Ensuring that infrastructure stocks are climate resilient will add 300 billion US dollars to annual financing needs through 2020, and that's without operations and maintenance. In total, this requires that we increase our spending on infrastructure from 3% to roughly 8% of GDP. Understanding this is essential for us, the World Bank Group, and you. We cannot allow development finance to fund stranded assets, and you cannot invest in them either. The private sector has established itself as a key player in transformational infrastructure, making progress in addressing environmental stewardship and social responsibility, as well as in adopting integrity standards. I believe after many years of generic discussion about what the investment community needs to do, what the climate resilient needs are and what the green growth opportunities are, we need to break this down sector by sector, country by country, region by region. Working with government, institutions like ours, developers, those of you who wish to be engaged in those sectors and markets, all of us will need to come together. Each of us will need to walk away from the table with what we need. The World Bank Group has origination capacity and risk mitigants at hand and we know we need to develop a new generation of them. You have capital that seeks a long-term diversified sustainable return. We, the World Bank Group, can demonstrate through tools and processes developed together with others how your investments can achieve adaptation and mitigation co-benefits as well as provide you with a financial return. We can measure it. You will need to report, if not now, then soon, on the triple bottom line and one that understands what climate will do to all of our futures. 
the momentum for a clean and resilient transition is still growing. We will reach a tipping point where the new green norm becomes the normal, but it will still take some time and it will require leadership and I think brinkmanship from risk takers both politically and economically to drive action and reap benefits. Potential return on investments by first movers is substantial and short to mid-term benefits in terms of growth, infrastructure, development, jobs, health and education could be equally substantial for governments driving transition to green. Thank you.